Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. We've got a real treat for you today. This isn't something we see very often. And even though I've got a large amount of spiders, I still don't get to see this very often. So this is really, really cool. We managed to catch our Pistolotheria metallica, which is the Guti ornamental or the sapphire. Um, we managed to catch her preparing to molt which is absolutely stunning. So we, we caught her making her web and then she flipped over and prepared herself for molting. Now, um, we've speeded this up. This is only a short video, but we've speeded this up because this whole process probably took, in all, from starting to make the web, she spent maybe, or oh, pretty much all afternoon making the web, an early evening, and then from actually flipping over onto her back took around about five and a half hours. And we've condensed that, speeded it up, so you get to see the whole process. So enough of me babbling on, let's have a look and see what she got up to. Well, here we have our female Metallica, and she is preparing to molt. Now this is the process which enables our spider to grow and they do this several times throughout their lifespan. Now the spider is covered in what we call an exoskeleton. Now this exoskeleton is made up of several layers of cuticle which is a composite material containing various proteins and chitin. Now this has two aspects. On the outside, which is the exoskeleton, it hardens and this is what protects our spider throughout its life. Now the cuticle is extremely strong, highly effective at keeping the spider from drying out. Hence the dry exterior. It locks everything inside. Now, in order for the spider to molt, it has to, and for it to grow, it has to create a new exoskeleton inside the old one, which is what has been going on for the past month or so. You'll notice that when your spider is preparing to molt it will go off of its food it will eat less to the point where eventually it will stop eating altogether now this is because as the body is preparing to molt what it's doing is it's actually creating a new exoskeleton which is a soft exoskeleton inside the old one which is the exterior of the spider that you are looking at. Now when we get to the stage where our spider has flipped over, it's laying on its back which is the, the majority of spiders will molt on their backs. They are capable of molting out on their front or on their sides but generally speaking they will flip over onto their backs. Some spiders will actually hang from a thread of silk and they'll do this in the open air. So they'll literally just hang and then they'll, they'll molt out. And this is to keep them away from predators and things like that. Now the, the new exoskeleton is very, very soft as you can see here now. You'll notice the fangs there are actually white whereas the old fangs on the old exoskeleton are black and this is because they've not hardened up yet they will color up in time now in order for her to molt and remove the old exoskeleton she needs to pulsate her body which is basically she is taking in air and filling her limbs and forcing the old skin off of the new exoskeleton. 
It's a fascinating procedure. Now when your spider is young, from spiderlings onwards, they molt out far more frequently. As your spider matures, it will slow down. And it will only molt out, maybe even only once a year. And as you can see there, she's almost through the stage now. Basically just the leg tips that are holding in. Now when this spider was preparing to molt, they actually secrete a fluid which is run between the new exoskeleton, the new spider, and the old exoskeleton. And this is to lubricate the whole thing. And it makes it easier for, to her, for her to retract her limbs out of the old skin, the old molt. And she is literally pushing fluid down into her new limbs and this is forcing the old skin off. You notice there she's very very pale. Colour will come in time as she, as she actually finishes and as she starts to harden up. Now spiders don't actually grow in the same way that we imagine other things growing. So what is happening here is when the exoskeleton dries out that is the full size of that spider. It will not get any bigger. And although your spider will put on weight this is because the limbs, the legs will stay the same size. They don't actually grow because the exoskeleton is actually very hard so it's, it, it is fixed but the skin around the abdomen and the joints is quite flexible and this allows our spider to take on a meal and you will often see after a big meal their abdomen will swell and this is, this is how they're, they're actually filling and growing and then once that spider has taken on so much fluid it can't take any more then that will promote it into a molt and the exoskeleton that it produces underneath the old one is actually that much bigger and this is what we're seeing now is the actual spider is flexing and it's pushing fluids into them appendages and this is how it actually grows. So once this spider hardens up, you will see that it would have increased in its size. You can see the color coming into the skin now. Notice the black parts getting much, much blacker now. And that blue is coming through. It's looking absolutely beautiful. you can also see clearly there the actual the toes on the spider and you can see the hooks these are tibial um, sorry these hooks are actually on the on the ends of the toes and this is what enables your spider to climb pretty much any surface very very strong and they're capable of hooking into the tiniest of of marks and this is what enables them to actually climb glass and things as you can see there, she's expanding. Now this whole process takes can take several hours. And even once, once she flips over, she may still choose to stay on that web for some days. Now it's important that we leave them alone when they're doing this.
Another interesting point that we can often see with spiders is when they do molt out, they have to have the capability of regenerating lost limbs. And you'll often see if a spider has actually regenerated a lost limb, you will see that that limb is quite often a little bit smaller than all the other limbs. But given time and every progressive molt, that limb will slowly get bigger and bigger until eventually it will look the same as all the others which is an absolutely amazing aspect of these, these incredible creatures to think that you can actually regrow a leg fascinating stuff and this is all down to the fact that they regrow a new skeleton every time they molt and see she's starting to stretch out a little bit now you would have noticed there as well, you can see the underside there, you see all the joints are where the legs join the actual main body. And you can see how that's expanding now. She's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is because the fluids are now being forced into that skin. They're stretching that skin to its full capacity. Now if we get the opportunity later on we'll remove the old skin and we can use this to determine the sex of our spider. Which is another fascinating aspect to these things. There she goes. Now it won't take her long before she actually flips over. she'll right herself and then rest and then continue the process of filling this new body with all the fluid that she has fantastic thing to watch here we go and there you have it she is now back over on the right way and will now rest until her exoskeleton hardens up and there we have our brand new spider well then that was something special was it not now then like i said before that took around about five and a half hours to actually for her to actually achieve that from flipping over onto her back to actually coming out the other side and writing herself the right way round in her new attire. As you saw on there, they actually go on their back so that they can push the old skin, the exoskeleton, they can push it off. So what happens is, is she rolls over on her back and the, the what was the top of her abdomen splits and the carapace frees itself from around the legs and then that comes off first. And then you'll see her fidgeting around very gently and little bits of flexing like this with her, with her legs. And then eventually she will push the legs out and this tears it off and it comes round. And then she will force it off the ends of her legs so that eventually it pops off altogether. Now, at this stage in the game, she is very, very susceptible to damage, predation or anything like that. So when you find your spider, if you find your spider flipped over on a lovely, nice, clean web, don't panic. She is literally just about to molt. Now, most important things now, if you find your spider in this position, is literally do not panic. Leave her alone. Try not to touch the enclosure because vibrations will upset them. They will actually feel like they're being threatened and you don't want her to stop in this process. It's very important that they are allowed to continue and achieve everything they need to do in one go, really. You must never touch them. Never feel tempted to actually turn them back the right way round because you feel they shouldn't be on their back. They're designed to be on their back. So to all intents and purposes, leave them well alone. When you see them coming into pre-mold, quite often you'll see their abdomens will swell. They'll often go very dark and sometimes they'll get a bald patch on them. 
and they look a little bit almost like opaque, although they're dark, they've, they've still got an opaque look about them. Again, if you see your spider getting into this, if there's any uneaten food, especially crickets, within the enclosure, try and remove them, because crickets, especially with very small spiders, when they molt out, they can be quite dangerous towards your spider, and they will nibble them. Bearing in mind that your spider is absolutely defenceless once it starts to molt. Now, with our girl there, she molted out, and she you'll see that when she righted herself and she was in the right position, upright again, you'll see she was very flopsy. She didn't have a full control of her body, and this is why they're so defenceless. And it's very important now that she is given time to harden up and get herself back to a, a normal, strong self. Now, this might take five to 10 days to actually achieve this. And this is why it's very important. You have often heard people saying that you shouldn't feed your spider for three to five days after they've molted out. Now, with slings, it's very, very quick. They molt out and they can feed within a day or two. They're very, very fast. The older and the larger your spider, the longer it takes it to actually harden up fully. Now, when she was molting out, you would have seen her fangs went from black in the beginning before her old skin came off to once she kicked that skin off, she was down to her, her new attire. You'll notice that her fangs were white. Now, these are very, very soft. They've not hardened up yet. So if she was to try and feed, she would damage herself. Now, so it's very important that you don't put food in when your spider is molting or for larger spiders up to 10 days or so. Look at your spider, a little bit of common sense. Have a think about it. If your spider is nice and active, moving around, doing everything that it should be, then chances are you're okay to get, try it with food. If it's still lethargic and laying around, even 10 days later, I've got um, a, a Balfouri female here that actually molted out on the 12th of the 5th. We are now on the 23rd, 22nd or 3rd of the 5th, and she has only just today left her molting web. So it gives you an idea of how long some of these spiders will take before they'll venture out. They're not necessarily starving once they've finished molting, but you will see a little bit of growth space, uh, spur. So when they have molted out, they will be a little bit bigger, which is always a good sign. And they look lovely and fresh, nice and colorful. They're very, very nice. Um, what else can we say about molting? Another important thing that I often get asked about, and I often see lots and lots of conversations and arguments um, about molting spiders, and this is about hydration. Now, if your spider is having trouble molting out, spraying it is not gonna do any good. Yeah, it will not do any good apart from seriously upset your spider. He's not gonna be happy about that. He, he, want, he wants to be dry. So you cannot rehydrate a spider by spraying it. This does not work. This is an old wives' tale. It's a myth that's been running around the hobby for many, many years. Spiders hydrate internally. So they get their hydration through drinking and they get it through their food. They don't get it by spraying. Not good, not good guys. So you wanna make sure that your spider is well fed before it molts and that its environment is as it should be. So they don't outwardly absorb hydration, yeah? It actually helps them in the way they live and things like this. So our humidity dependent spiders, they require a high humidity environment, but they're not actually drawing that in. It's not hydrating them, it's just leaving them in a comfortable environment as they are. A bit like you guys in the winter when you turn the fire on, it's nice and comfortable, isn't it? But you don't need it, you know, it's just, it just makes you feel nice and comfortable. So hydration, very, very important when it comes to molting. Right then, well, I think we've sort of, uh, I think we've covered most things there. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a fascinating thing to see. And if you get the opportunity, it's worth sitting up half the night to watch it. I was up a long time filming that. And uh, it's always, always worth it. So um, yes. 
if you get the opportunity, make sure you watch it. Brilliant stuff. Why then? Don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders. I'll see you soon, guys.